Welcome for a brief video demonstration of Berkeley Baratronics Systems Yellowfin Mobile WiMAX 802.16e test receiver. Um, we'll start off with the WiMAX. Uh, right now we're programmed for one carrier frequency here at 2490 MHz. The instrument will display the signal strength of the preamble, and the preambles covered are 0 to 113. Uh, this particular preamble here has the uh, number of the preamble inside of the rectangular box as well as the RSSI a signal strength level that's riding up on top of the box. In order to drill down uh, to other features it's simply a matter of tapping the bar up at the top which has the carrier frequency uh, and then you are presented with the uh, preamble ID, the cell ID, the segment, the signar, and the RSSI the signal strength for the preamble. In this case here in the lab we only have one preamble up at this time, it's preamble 16, and uh, the RSSI is riding about uh, the high and uh, negative 60s at the moment. Um, we have some drill down screens where we do some unique things in the industry. Uh, in order to get to those, you simply tap the particular preamble number that you're interested in up here in the list. Uh, this screen presents the signal strength over time. There are high and low watermarks on it, and it does contain about 20 seconds worth of history on the signal strength of the preamble. Up at the top, we then also relist the information for that particular preamble. To get to the other screens is simply a swipe of this one here. And now what we're doing is we're looking at the uh, frequency response of the preamble itself. In addition to that, we can also make measurements in the time domain. Berkeley's product has the capability to make RF multipath measurements of the preamble. This particular screen, the uh, y-axis is percentage of correlation. The x-axis is in time, in microseconds, or time in symbol. Uh, what we can see here is that we have a very nice pronounced peak at uh, the zero time interval, and there are no reflections out in time here, either in microseconds or fractions of a symbol time. Uh, we have color-coded this to represent different fractions of the symbol time in time and uh, depending on what your guard interval is would indicate whether you can tolerate multipath within the first increment out to the second, third, or fourth and then again what would be not tolerated by the system and cause problems. Another swipe of the uh, screen uh, would display a, a newly uh, created screen where we show the preamble and the sign R over time, each of which have their high and low watermarks on there and each of which have about 20 seconds worth of history. Then I can do only the sign R over time. Last swipe will get you back to the uh, preamble uh, RSSI over time. These two boxes here would either return me to the particular carrier frequency that I was fixed on or to a scan list. The scan list is created by pulling down the menu and inputting the frequency using this keypad where it would get built up on the left hand side of the screen and we can have multiple frequencies set up. And this can also be saved and retrieved as a file. I can set it as my current list, I can edit it, etc. So if now I set it as my current list, what we notice is I have three different frequencies up here. Now the instrument is actually changing carrier frequency. Every time it hits a carrier frequency about once per second, it'll demodulate whatever preambles are there, and it will also color code based on the colors up here. So all of the preambles on the carrier frequency 2490 will be shaded blue. All of them on 2500 would be shaded green if we had them. All of them on 2510 would be shaded red. In addition to that feature, we also have to select the bandwidth and FFT samples. There are five different selections. For the signal here in the test lab, we've selected 10 megahertz as the bandwidth and 1024 as the FFT. The instrument also has a very nice feature called signal search. If you should go out into the field and you really don't know what the carrier frequency is, you can enter a start and stop frequency here and a step increment and the instrument would find the carrier frequency. So 
let's put that to the test. If I knew that my frequency is somewhere between 2450 and 2550, and I'm using a 10 megahertz step, then if I hit the search button, I have 10 frequencies to scan, and as soon as it uh, stops on the carrier frequency, it'll display it. You can see here we have 2490, so it actually found the signal that we put on the air. I can highlight that, pass it over, and now I can say, set the selected frequencies as my current scan list. You can also do some signal preamble uh, filter and averaging here with regards to the RSSI over time and the preamble uh, SINAR over time. The instrument is capable of demodulating the WiMAX signal over a very wide frequency range which gives our product another unique capability. Anywhere between uh, 2 GHz and 5.9 GHz if you have any mobile WiMAX 802.16e activity, the instrument will be able to demodulate it and show you the measurements that we have gone through just prior. Of course, this wouldn't be complete unless we are able to log the data, and in this case it's simply a Windows-driven thing where uh, you would open up the log feature, you would create a file name and a folder, and save that, and then, of course, as soon as that's started, we would be logging the file, and the file would be geocoded with the 12-channel GPS receiver that would be locked to the GPS signal, for example, during a drive study. There's a tool called Screen Capture. At any time, if I wanted to take a JPEG file snapshot of what I'm seeing on the display screen of the tablet PC, the instrument also has a power status screen because our module, which is sitting behind this tablet PC, has a built-in lithium-ion rechargeable power source, and uh, this status screen is basically telling me that it's fully charged and it's accurately tracking its charging voltage. Now, the other thing I'd like to call your attention to is I've mentioned briefly the GPS. There is a toggle here for a screen that will give you the current GPS status. Here we display latitude, longitude, date, time, number of visible satellites, number of tracked satellites, and the status, which is very important uh, while you're doing the drive study, it's necessary that you maintain a 3D lock in order to properly geocode your measurements. One of the uh, final features of the yellow fin is its ability to measure signals in a spectrum analyzer mode. And what you'll find here is a very uh, sophisticated uh, laboratory-grade spectrum analyzer feature here in the lower left hand corner is an extremely important feature called a trigger which is what I'm using now in order to signal, uh, synchronize the trace with the OFDM signal that's on the air. Uh, without the trigger mode on I would simply be in the asynchronous mode. Up in the uh, upper right hand corner we have three different color traces. Uh, for this display I've elected to use a, a peak hold which is the white trace color followed by an average red trace color, trace over trace, and then I've also set up two markers here, a main marker which is the diamond and a delta marker which is the inverted triangle. The values of those markers are shown below. Uh, what we're showing here on the screen is a simple power profile of that 10 megahertz channel that we have on the air for the test signal, but out in the field uh, what you want to do is you may want to do a uh, spot studies or drive studies for clear channel analysis to make sure that you don't have any other signals there that shouldn't be there that would compete whether or not they are uh, WiMAX signals or some other sources. That brings me to the conclusion of the uh, demonstration here for the yellow fin for a mobile WiMAX 802.16e. Berkeley Baratronics also has a similar model for 802.16d that has basically the same features but it uses the 802.16d fixed WiMAX standard in the demodulation of the information. Thank you.